Amano Hashidate is one of Japan's most scenic views, often referred to as the bridge to heaven. It's a natural sandbar covered with pine trees that stretches across Miyazu Bay, creating a picturesque landscape that seems to connect the sea and the sky. This tranquil spot is perfect for leisurely walks or bike rides, offering stunning views at every turn. Visitors can enjoy a cable car ride to a nearby viewpoint, providing a great perspective of this Japanese natural wonder. Ine is a hidden gem known for its unique funaya, which are traditional boathouses that line the waterfront. It's a quaint fishing village that is like no other. Nestled along serene waters, it offers a glimpse into a slower, more harmonious way of life. The charming scenery where houses are built on the water's edge, with boats docked right in front of the doors as if they were garages, creates a picturesque setting that feels like a step back in time. Visitors can explore the village by boat and immerse themselves in the peace of this idyllic coastal retreat. So, how do you get to Amano Hashidate and Ine from Kyoto? Although it's quite straightforward, there are some important things that you'll need to know. The best option is probably driving, so if you're a confident driver, then renting a car will truly unlock this area, with Amano Hashidate being under an hour and a half drive away. This will mean that you won't have any time constraints or worries about buses or infrequent trains. It will also be your best option if you want to visit both Ine and Amano Hashidate in a day. By train, Amano Hashidate is just over two hours away from Kyoto, but limited express trains can be infrequent. For example, 7.32 a.m. 8.38 a.m. and then a big jump with the next one being at 11.08 so leaving early is your best bet. Also be careful because not all trains are limited express and might take you over four hours to get there if you get the wrong one. And as a word of warning the best last trains returning with less transfers depart before 6 p.m. with the final one can take between three and a half and four hours and require multiple changes departing at around 8 p.m. So don't miss that one. Another good option is traveling to the area by bus which takes around two hours and is a good direct option. Although it's important to note that buses are also infrequent with only three or four departures a day. It's easy to see that if using public transportation, the early bird catches a worm and good advanced planning will be key to a successful trip. And if you want to travel to Ine, this is done from Amano Hashidate with a bus service running roughly once an hour with the journey taking either one hour or 30 minutes depending on where you board. I'm going to share with you how my trip to Amano Hashidate and Ine turned out so that you can also get ideas or potentially follow my experience as a blueprint for your trip. So my trip, arriving on the early train from Kyoto and leaving my bags at the hotel, I headed to Shinoji Temple. One of the things that I love about coming to places like this, um, a little bit more inaka, a little bit out of the way, not quite your tourist spot, a little bit touristy but not really, is how quiet these places are. I've had this temple to myself for the last 15-20 minutes. I've been walking around and it's been absolutely fantastic. Had this been somewhere in Tokyo or Kyoto or another major city, it would have been a completely different story. So use the opportunity to get out of the big cities like Tokyo and Kyoto etc and explore some temples and shrines that although they might be famous and they might be in touristy sites, they're definitely going to be less touristy, there's definitely going to be less people than some of those bigger sites. And in this case, this temple that I'm in right now, it's only like a five minute walk from the station, it's called Shinonji Temple and it's known as a temple where people give offerings for wisdom, academic success and personal success and they leave little fans hanging on the trees. Each temple, whenever you travel anywhere in Japan, is a little bit different and unique and I don't think I've ever seen any with these fans hanging on, on the tree. It's pretty cool, it's pretty unique. Maybe you can get one and you can hang one for your own fortune too. After a quick pick-me-up coffee, I headed to the ropeway where there are two options you can take. Either the continuous chairlift or the monorail. I chose the chairlift. And obviously I needed to try the famous upside down view which was quite a fan gimmick that I do recommend everyone try. I'm in Amano Hashidate Viewland and this place is pretty cool. There's like a theme park, there's little rides. Personally, I spent a little bit longer than I expected here. I thought it was gonna be a quick 10 minute thing, but I've probably been here a good 45 minutes. Um, definitely worth checking out, in my opinion. The view from up here is spectacular. One of Japan's top three viewing spots and I've seen them, I've seen the three of them. I'm gonna to have to think about which one I like the most. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> this one's pretty cool. 
After a lot of planning, I decided that it would be best to rent a bicycle and travel across the sandbar, stopping along the way instead of doing the publicized boat tour. Okay, this is my ride here, this is my ride. <laughs> so I've opted to rent a bicycle instead of using the, the boat tour. Um, it's cheaper, it's 400 yen. I have a two hour limit and I can drop it off at the other side of the sandbank. Collection point is at the boat station, drop off is at the other boat station or back at its original place. It's important to note that if you are thinking about visiting Amano Hashidate and Ine Town all together, then Amano Hashidate and Ine Town two day pass might be worth considering. This pass includes unlimited rides of local buses between Miyazu City, Amano Hashidate and Ine Town. It also includes the Amano Hashidate and Ine sightseeing boat tour and the cable car too. I opted not to get the pass as I needed to be more flexible as a result of filming and I decided that renting the bike would suit my trip better. This is why I like to come to places like this. There's no one around. Only me, guys. I also felt that being able to drop the bicycle off at the other end of the sandbar and catching a shorter 30 minute bus to Ine from there would also make better use of my time. Had I caught the bus from the station end of the sandbar, the bus trip to Ine would have taken an hour. The number you get corresponds to the number up there and how much you have to pay when it appears now in a minute. Arriving at Ine, I went straight for the boat ride and I was so glad to have chosen this boat ride. I actually think I did the right thing because the view around here is very different, very beautiful. When you do it, when you go to the view spot and you look down, um, you kind of see the whole, the whole thing from the top. This is completely different. And I know that you can get a very similar thing in, in, um, in the, other, the other boat ride with all the seagulls you can feed, etc. But this is very, very, very cool. Totally recommend this. The views from the boat of these famous, unique and picturesque Funaya, which at traditional boat houses was worth the effort. Birds would fly along the boat and people were feeding them. And I had a huge fright when a bird of prey swooped in and took some of my food from my hand. This was a great opportunity to get a sense of how wonderful this area truly is. After the boat ride, I walked the quiet, less visited streets and had another coffee and a quick snack and spoke to some beautiful girls that actually lived in one of the Funaya boat houses. After the conversation, I was convinced to visit one of the Funaya that was open to visitors to get a sense of what life might be like on one of these amazing traditional buildings, unlike anything I'd ever seen in Japan. The really cool thing is that people actually live in these houses, um, these boat houses with their own little boat garages. And this one actually was open 500 yen for a, for a little tour. You can walk around. It really is interesting and incredibly well maintained and very beautiful. Um, <laughs> it's really cool to see them from outside, but inside it's worth a look, that's for sure. The bus trip to Amano Hashidate Station took an hour and this is where my Ryokan hotel was located. But as a result of restaurants being closed and my hotel not offering any food options, I had to travel to Miyazu. I returned to Kyoto the following morning after a well-rested night. But I learned a lot on this trip along the way. <laughs> okay, so what would I do differently? On this trip, I've pretty much seen everything in one day, which is fine because I'm spending the night. However, I would actually do things a little bit different. Today, I started at the station, I went, to the temple, followed by the ropeway. Then I went to the boat pier. I rented a bike, rode across all the way to the other side, got a bus to Ine, got a sightseeing boat, walked to the center of Ine, and then caught a bus to come back. Overall, that's a lot to do in one day. Thankfully, I'm staying here. So what would I actually do differently? I would probably start off at the ropeway, cycle across to the other side of the sandbank and get the bus to Ine. Check out Ine and leave the rest of this area 
for the following morning because I'm staying here. Overall, Amano Hashidate and Ine is definitely worth the trip. I very much recommend staying the night as it will mean a more relaxed trip with opportunities to either try to fit everything in one day and leaving the following day well rested or splitting the trip into two full days. Ine was probably my surprise find from the entire trip. The location is so picturesque, possibly among some of the most picturesque towns that I have ever visited in Japan. It really is a hidden gem that is less visited. On the note of making travel easier, I must say that having access to a data connection made a huge difference on this trip. I was able to use my Sakura mobile pocket Wi-Fi to check train times, navigate around these areas and to research information whilst on location. So. I highly recommend that you have access to an internet connection whilst traveling around Japan. Whether it's a data sim, eSIM or pocket Wi-Fi, please consider using my affiliate link in the video description or the QR code. You'll receive a trusted product and I'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you and you'll be helping the channel out. And if you have watched this far, then prove it by commenting with a wave emoji, even if you have nothing to say. Looking for more casual content and live streams, then please check out my second channel, The Happy Gaijin. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy Gaijin. Safe travels. Bye.